There has always been a host of problems faced by humans tilling the soil, such as improper pH, erosion, or loss of organic matter and nutrients. But one of the most serious and persistent over the history of agriculture in so many of the drier regions of the world where human civilizations have arisen has been salinity. As a broad generalization, soils of humid regions tend to become acid, while soils of arid regions tend to become saline. I'm Dr. DeBusk, and in this video, I'll discuss soil with salinity issues and how to treat them. In humid regions of the United States, acidity is a common problem for growers because percolation leaches calcium, magnesium, and sodium from the soil. Growers in more arid parts of the nation often have a different but related problem, an accumulation of soluble salts of these same bases. This accumulation tends to be a problem in dry climates where natural levels of rainfall cannot flush salts out of the soil. We also associate this salinization with poor drainage in irrigated fields. Irrigation imports salts into fields, and when drainage is poor, irrigation raises the water table bringing salt-laden water into the root zone of crops. The soluble salts of greatest concern in the soil are sulfates, bicarbonates, and chlorides of the bases calcium, magnesium, and sodium. These salts may come from parent materials, irrigation with salty water, or even de-icing salts. In salted soils, salts cause a number of problem conditions. Primary among these are osmotic effects. In non-saline soil, about half the water held at field capacity is available to plants. In saline soil, as little as 10% may be available because of osmotic potential. Other effects include the following. Roots can adjust somewhat to salted soil by raising their own solute levels to lower osmotic potential inside the cell and reestablish a potential gradient. But this takes energy that could go into growth and other functions. Specific ions, mainly chlorine and sodium, may be taken up by plant roots and accumulate in plant tissue to toxic levels. These are called ion-specific effects. Stress on roots from salinity makes them more prone to root rot organisms. Nutrient imbalances in the plant can result from excess of some ions at the expense of others. For instance, high levels of sodium can induce potassium or calcium deficiencies. High soil salt levels inhibit population of some soil microorganisms while encouraging others, changing the biological nature of the soil. In certain cases, extremely high pH occurs. The bottom photo shows salt damage on a tomato as yellowing and death of leaf margins from some combination of the factors just mentioned. Saline soils have high levels of soluble salts except sodium. Soil salinity can be easily measured by passing an electrical current through a solution extracted from a soil sample. The greater the salt content, the greater the electrical current. This value is called electrical conductivity, or EC, and is the means by which we measure salinity. For many common day-to-day -day uses, EC is measured as millimoles per centimeter. For scientific publication, the units semen per meter are preferred, and one semen per meter equals 10 millimoles per centimeter. A saline soil is defined as a soil with an EC of four or more millimoles per centimeter. However, salinity levels as low as two millimoles per centimeter can injure sensitive plants. Most salts are chlorides or sulfates. Soil pH is 8.5 or less. A white crust may be seen on the soil surface due to salts migrating to the surface by capillary rise. This is also commonly observed on the soil surface in potted plants. Soils can be classified for use based on salinity. The bottom table shows the classification system of salinity and how it affects the crop. This table classifies common crops according to their salt tolerance. Crops such as beans, lettuce, peppers, and carrots are more sensitive. Sodic soils are lower in the kinds of salts found in saline soils, but high in sodium. The exchangeable sodium percentage, or sodium saturation, is 15 or more, and the pH is in the range of 8.5 to 10.0. Sodium is often measured by the sodium adsorption ratio, SAR. The SAR compares concentration of sodium ions with the concentration of calcium and magnesium ions. Sodic soil has a number of effects on plant growth. Sodium reacts with water to form lye. The resulting high pH, 8.5 or higher, limits growth of most plants. For many crops, the main effect of sodium is destruction of soil structure. When sodium ions saturate cation exchange sites, colloids separate and disperse soil aggregates. 
Till suffers and crusts hard enough to stop seed germination may form. Plants may take up enough sodium to injure plant tissues. Crops vary in their tolerance to sodium as seen in the bottom table. For the most sensitive plants, such as citrus fruits, the nutritional effects of sodium are more important than its effects on structure. Saline sodic soils contain high levels of both soluble salts and sodium. EC is greater than 4.0 millimoles per centimeter, SAR is greater than 13, and pH is less than 8.5. The physical structure of these soils is normal. However, after periods of heavy rain and irrigation with low salt water, soluble calcium and magnesium may leach out of the soil, leaving behind sodium salts. Soil may then become sodic with poor physical structure and drainage. The first step in reclamation of salted soils is to decide whether the project is practical and will pay for itself. The basic step up to reclaiming soil is to leach out salts, so there must be a source of acceptable water. Very fine textured soils may not allow sufficient drainage. If a decision is made to reclaim the soil, the next step is to ensure good drainage to allow salt water to leave the soil profile. After proper drainage has been installed, the next steps depend on the type of problem. Saline soils are most easily reclaimed. Growers flood the soil surface so that percolation leaches salts out of the soil profile. High quality water works best, but larger amounts of fairly saline water will also work. Treatment water should, however, be low in sodium. Ponding is one way to apply leaching water. In ponding, heavy equipment obstruct, constructs low earthen dikes to divide the affected land into ponds, which are then flooded. Sodic soils cannot usually be reclaimed simply by leaching because the sealed soil surface inhibits drainage, which is usually necessary to first remove the sodium. This is typically done by treating the soil with gypsum. When gypsum enters the soil, it dissolves and calcium replaces sodium on the cation exchange sites. The soil slowly begins to aggregate and sodium sulfate leaches out of the soil. Saline sodic soils must be treated to remove sodium. If they are simply leached with low salt water, calcium and magnesium salts are removed, but sodium remains in the soil, forming a sodic soil. Thus, gypsum treatments are useful. Saline soils, especially irrigated land in arid climates, may be managed to reduce salt problems. If possible, use high quality irrigation water. Keep soil moist. Water dilutes soil salts, lowering the effect of osmotic potential. Salts tend to be most damaging in dry soil when the salts are concentrated and both osmotic and matrix potential are high. Over irrigate enough to leach salts out of the root zones. The amount of extra water needed is called the leaching fraction. Avoid over fertilization. Most fertilizers are salts and can compound salinity problems. Maintain a good soil testing program to monitor salinity and avoid over fertilization. Plant on ridge shoulders in furrow irrigated fields. Salts tend to concentrate on the top of the ridge. Use drip irrigation. It tends to reduce salt stress because it keeps the soil uniformly moist and moves salts out of the root zone and into the soil between plants and rows as seen in the figure. One difficulty with methods for reclaiming and managing salted soils is that they do not eliminate soluble salts but move them to another place. Salty drainage water appears in rivers downstream on affected farms, making that water even saltier. Individual growers do have some options to help reduce saline discharges from their fields. Improving irrigation efficiency and practicing minimum leaching are examples of practices that minimize the problem. Where necessary, collection of drainage water and evaporation ponds may be possible, but expensive. Growers of potted plants work constantly to maintain a proper EC in their pots. This means frequent monitoring of EC with conductivity meters, often on a weekly basis. Where irrigation water is saline, a little extra water is added at each irrigation to leach out salts that might otherwise accumulate. In some cases, water must be treated to reduce salinity, though this is expensive. Growers also tightly manage the fertilizer program to avoid fertilizer buildup. If tests reveal that the EC has risen too high, growers leach pots with a heavy watering. This is done by watering pots heavily until water runs out of the bottom, allowing more salts to dissolve for a half hour, then repeating the heavy water application. Since this treatment leaches out all the fertilizer, it is followed by an appropriate fertilizer application. In conclusion, salted soils may be saline sodic or saline sodic. Saline soils can be treated by flooding to leach out salts. Sodic soils are treated with gypsum to replace the sodium. Saline sodic soils contain both soluble salts and sodium. 
After a salted soil is treated, it must be managed carefully to reduce salt problems.